As one of the pillars of a healthy lifestyle, sleep is an essential part of your health, well-being, and safety. Yet millions of people suffer from a chronic sleep disorder, which can ruin your health and quality of life. A sleep study will help your doctor to detect a sleep problem, make diagnosis, and determine the best treatment options for you. This is your sleep study. A sleep study is also called a polysomnogram. It records your brain waves, heartbeat, and breathing as you sleep. It also charts your eye and chin movements, arm and leg movements, and oxygen in your blood. All of this data will enable your doctor to understand how you are sleeping and identify what may be wrong with your sleep. A sleep study requires you to spend the night at a sleep center. Since 1977, the American Academy of Sleep Medicine has accredited sleep centers to ensure that patients receive the highest quality of care. The Academy's accreditation logo is a visible sign of a sleep center's commitment to excellence. Before your sleep study, try to follow your regular routine as much as possible, but you should avoid naps and caffeine during the afternoon. Also, avoid using hairspray, hair gel, or hair extensions, any of which that can interfere with your sleep study sensors. Bring with you to the sleep center the same items that you would pack for a night at a hotel. This includes comfortable pajamas, a toothbrush and toothpaste, and a change of clothes for the next day. You might prefer to bring your own pillow, and you also should bring any medications that you normally take at night or in the morning. When you arrive at the sleep center, you will be introduced to a trained sleep technologist who will show you to your room. Your sleep center will provide a safe, private, and comfortable bedroom for your sleep study. After you change into your pajamas and get ready for bed, the sleep technologist will begin to apply a series of sensors to your head and skin. These small metal discs are applied with an adhesive paste. The sensors record your brain waves, muscle tone, and heart rate. Flexible belts will be wrapped around your chest and stomach to measure breathing effort. Sensors placed near your nose and mouth will measure airflow, and a pulse oximeter will monitor the amount of oxygen in your blood. The pulse oximeter will be clipped on your earlobe or index finger, which may require the removal of any nail polish. A video camera in your room will record the entire sleep study. Wires linking all of the sensors will be gathered together like a ponytail and connected to a box. This will allow you to roll over in bed and easily change sleeping positions. At any time, the sleep technologist will be able to quickly disconnect the wires if you need to go to the bathroom. The technologist will go to a separate control room to test the sensors. You will be asked to open and close your eyes, clench your teeth, and flex your toes. During the sleep study, the technologist will monitor you from a nearby control room. You will be able to call the technologist if you need assistance with anything during the night. Next, it is the best part of your sleep study. Time to go to sleep. As you sleep, your sensors provide a steady stream of data that will be used to determine if you have a sleep disorder. Sleep disorders that are frequently diagnosed with a sleep study include obstructive and central sleep apnea, narcolepsy, periodic limb movement disorder, and a variety of parasomnias, which involve undesirable events or experiences during sleep. One of the most common sleep disorders is obstructive sleep apnea, a chronic disease which involves repeated breathing pauses during the night. Sleep apnea occurs when your muscles relax allowing soft tissue in the back of the throat to collapse and block the airway. A person with severe sleep apnea may have hundreds of breathing pauses per night. Loud snoring is a common warning sign for sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea can have a devastating impact on your health. Untreated sleep apnea increases your risk for other health problems, such as high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, and stroke. Before you go to sleep, the technologist might tell you that your doctor ordered a split night study. This means if you show clear signs of sleep apnea during the first half of your sleep study, the technologist will enter your room and begin the treatment during the second half of the night. A stream of air will be provided through a mask that you wear as you sleep. The airflow restores normal breathing by preventing your airway from collapsing. This therapy, called continuous positive airway pressure, or CPAP, is the most effective treatment option for sleep apnea. In the morning, the technologist will begin to remove all the sensors. This marks the end of your sleep study. 
After you get dressed, you're free to go and can return to your normal daily schedule. All of the data from your sleep study will be analyzed by a sleep technologist. Here is a sample from an actual sleep study. Data from the respiratory effort belts show that the patient was trying to breathe. However, data from the airflow sensor shows that breathing stopped for more than 10 seconds. This represents an example of an obstructive apnea. Your data analysis will be reviewed and interpreted by a board-certified sleep medicine physician. The sleep doctor will either diagnose your sleep disorder or determine that your sleep is normal. If you have a sleep disorder, the doctor will recommend the best treatment options for you. The sleep center will provide you with a copy of your sleep study report. Here is an example. It gives you details about your sleep duration, sleep quality, breathing, heart rate, oxygen levels, and movements during sleep. Your doctors and the team of healthcare professionals at your sleep center will help you implement any recommended treatment steps. With this help, you'll begin to see improvements in your sleep health and daytime alertness. Your sleep study will be a start of a new beginning for your health and quality of life.